uh, you had a talk on uh, the STEMI management uh, uh, on uh, uh, CSI uh, over the last two days. Yeah. So, we would like to discuss uh, something about this the current scenario in the India and uh, how the management options and what See, are the See, in comparison to Western world, we are lagging behind very, very much in the awareness of general population right. regarding the STEMI onset because we find uh, the patients with the acute MI much, much later than in Western countries. Mm -hmm. So, it's a burning issue and uh, with all the attempts and everything from us doctors, we have not been able to reduce the diagnosis by the patients, by the lay persons of the onset of acute MI. Right. Because in abroad, the patient comes much earlier in the Scandinavian countries, US, Canada and Western European countries. But in comparison to that, in the CREATE registry, we have found that the average patient comes with an acute MI at 5 hours. And in our practice, our experience is that we get many patients much after that, mm -hmm. say after 12 hours, 24 hours, 36 hours, like that. And uh, by that time, the heart muscle is heavily damaged. So the awareness of of people, lay people as a whole, of the population you can tell, is a very, very urgent need of the society right, to sir. keep the muscle viable, good contracting because we know after 12 hours almost all the muscle is damaged in, after a heart attack. Right. Though we find th those are exceptions that sometimes we find that if we intervene even after 24 hours sometimes we can present an intact heart to the uh, you know patient. So, this is the one thing and second thing is that uh, we know that primary angioplasty is better than thrombolysis. But in India, 95% of the patients go for, prime, uh, for this thrombolysis. They can't go for primary angioplasty. Right. So, our solution to the problem is that as soon as we get the patient, we can give thrombolytics like retiplase or tenecteplase or even streptokinase to the patient along with aspirin and clopidogrel. Right, sir. As you, that, uh, yeah. right, sir. As you rightly said, so most of the guidelines also talk about ACCHA or EAC guidelines. They talk the primary PCI should be the first standard of yeah. care. But yeah. uh, considering the FMC for Indian patients, it's much higher and the CREATE registry we have seen it's almost 5 hours. So, what do you see? And also in, Kerala registry. Right, also Kerala yeah. registry. So, what do you see in the eastern part of the country? You are from K uh, Calcutta, so. No, we do get patients much later. Of course, it's not that we don't get patient at 1 hours or 2 mm -hmm. hours. Some right. patients we do, but they are the smaller numbers. Majority of the patients we get much later after 12 hours or after 8 hours, after 18 hours, like that. Right. So, majority of the patient comes much later after damaging the ventricle in a bad way. So, that is a big problem in our country. And as I was talking about the treatment of STEMI, as soon as we get the patient, we should not wait much. Right. If we see that the primary PCI will take more than one hour from the thrombolysis, we should go for thrombolysis right. because there are huge traffic jams. There are uh, delay in the onset of diagnosis on the part of us physicians also. The general physicians take some time to transfer the patient to a proper center. So, first of all, the patient should go to a proper center where there is facility for treating heart disease. That's the number one thing because sometimes the patient is uh, admitted to some nursing home or hospital where there is no uh, practical, you know, treatment for the heart disease or acute MI patients like even thrombolysis is not done in many patients and we find that in our country almost 35-40% patients are non-perfused. Right, they are sir. not perfused mechanically, not to tell of mechanically, but also pharmacologically by the thrombolytics. Right. So, the burning issue today is that we should educate the population as a whole regarding the symptomatology mm -hmm. and the signs of heart attack because that's the burning issue and we are lacking very, very much in that. Secondly, after getting the patients, we should not waste any time. Right. We should do some short of reperfusion. Right. If primary is possible, if it is a PCI capable hospital, right. okay, you do the primary. Otherwise, you go for thrombolysis and send the patient to a center where, you know, this uh, pharmacoinvasive PCI can be done and uh, it can be done between 3 to 24 hours following the thrombolysis. Right, of sir. course, if it is a failed thrombolysis, then we go for earlier PCI. But if it is not a failed thrombolysis, then we go for an angiogram between 3 to 
24 hours and we see the coronary arteries. It's not that, that each and every patient following thrombolysis needs angioplasty. Right. So, so, so sir, your message is that uh, thrombolysis followed by the PCI would be the ideal approach. Ideal the approach. Pharmacoinvasive approach. Yeah. And for this thrombolysis, what is your message, sir? What kind of thrombolysis? Thrombolysis, you, uh, you see, we would like to go for second generation thrombolysis, like mm -hmm. retiplase or tenecteplase, because mm -hmm. you know with retiplase, the infarct related artery patency rate at 90 minutes is 62 to 63 percent. Mm -hmm. It is same with tenecteplase also. But with streptokinase, it is only 32 percent. And we know that uh, for the survival of the heart muscle and patency of the myocytes, the surviving right. myocytes, you know, the patency of the infarct-related artery is very important. Right. And uh, we all know that if the flow is steam is zero following an MI, the mortality is as high as 10 percent, but it's halved. That means it's 5 percent or below 5 percent if we get the, if we have a TME3 flow in the infarct related artery. So it's very, very important to establish the TME3 flow in the infarct related artery. And uh, I think retiplase and tenecteplase are way ahead of streptokinase in doing so. And some of these studies, smaller studies have shown some mortality benefit also with retiplase and uh, tenecteplase. So I would like to go for this third generation thrombolytics and after successful thrombolysis, we should send the patient after the patient becomes little stable hemodynamically, they do come hemo hemodynamically stable, we should send the patient to a center where uh, there is facility for angiography and after doing a coronary angiogram, if we find that the infarct related artery has severe stenosis that is more than 70 percent or something unusual even 50, 60 percent stenosis but ulcerated lesion, very bad lesion like that, mm -hmm. those are exceptional cases. So, according to the indication of angioplasty, we should go for angioplasty. One point I want to emphasize that after thrombolysis, all patients don't require uh, you know, angioplasty. Right. So, we should go for a angiogram as a routine in 100 percent of the patient and we should try to do also a LV angiogram because that gives a good indication that how is the LV because sometimes echo is not possible in a small time frame and that gives a good idea that how is the left ventricular and diastolic pressure because one systolic function may be good but the same patient may have severe LV diastolic dysfunction you may find the LV DP to be as high as 40-45 millimeter of mercury and they do need treatment by uh, you know diuretics and beta blockers etc to reduce the end diastolic pressure significantly right, and sir. I can tell from our experience that uh, <clears throat> the outlook is beautiful with uh, you know this pharmacoinvasive approach and many studies have shown that uh, there is no difference so far morbidity and mortality as concerned between pharmacoinvasive approach and the primary PCI. So, Though so primary PCI is still now the first option, right. there is no doubt about it, but a lot of studies have come and though have shown that there is no difference between the primary PCI and the pharmacoinvasive right, approach. Right, so that is a good point, so there is, there is no mortality <coughs> difference in the long term uh, whether you are doing the uh, pharmacoinvasive approach or primary PCI. And I feel that's the, also the call of the hour for the country like India, sir. So, what would be uh, your final concluding remark on this thing? I, my concluding remark is that what I uh, initiated, that the patient education, the education of the general population should be very good because we do get patients much later after a heart attack. That's right. a big problem and by that time the majority of heart muscle is damaged. We have to educate our doctors also, young doctors that don't waste any time, send the patient to a hospital with facilities for cardiac care in your area so that the patient, and don't, uh, a patient can be taken care of. And all the patients, 100 out of 100 patients should be reperfused, whether it is by pharmacological means, or by mechanical means. Thank you very or much, both. sir. See, in comparison to Western world, we are lagging behind very, very much in the awareness of general population right. regarding